should I grab paper? I'm gonna grab some paper. Uh, is anybody waiting, you know? We are live. We are live. All right. You have a whole projection light back there in the other room. That's right. How's it going, man? Good, good. I am very excited to talk to you today. Very so, excited to talk to you as well. Thanks for reaching out. Let's do like a quick introduction for everybody. Because yeah. obviously you and I know each other. Um, sure. So for everybody that doesn't know David, um, so you and I met through the Data Science Club back in, that would have been what, 2015, 2016? I think 2015, around that time. Okay, yeah. So we met way back then, and at that point, I was a sophomore, and we had just started the Data Science Club. It was just starting out. And yeah. you were a UCSB grad, um, and fast forward to today, you're now a data scientist at Delta Emerald Ventures. Did I get that right this time? All right, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. Data scientist at Delta Emerald Ventures and got a degree in economics and Spanish and a certificate in technology management, right? That's right. Nice, nice. So how are you doing today? How are things in New York? I'm doing well, man. Uh, we're, you know, this is uh, um, strangest of times, the pandemic, uh, obviously. No need to harp on that. Uh, you know, uh, as per usual, I did some programming this weekend, um, had my friend over. Uh, so yeah. we were kind of hanging our hands against the wall with some <laughs> stuff. You some... said containers, right? You were starting to use yeah, containers. Yeah, we're dealing with like um, Terraform and um, AWS and ECS and ECR and GitHub Actions. So okay. trying to automate yeah. the CI, CD pipeline for yeah. projects. Yeah. Dude, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Containers, um, definitely a shift in the whole mental model because you have to push up to the registry. You got to pull it down. It's not like That's you can right. just push your code over to a VM or something. Yeah. It's got to go like through all these different hoops and then finally you can touch yeah, that yeah, and start yeah. running. So I, I think one of the issues we're having, and you know, we can get to the to the introduction or whatever, but uh, one of the issues uh, I think we're having is that the container requires a uh, permissions file or like not permissions, but like a, like, mm. a, like a, like a, like a part, like a secrets, right? Like, uh, like the secret okay. API and all that stuff. To get up to the registry. Uh, uh, not to get to the registry, but to run on ECS. Right. Right. It. So it requires like a key to be able to form the database and yeah. like and secrets uh, management but, yeah, yeah that can be a real pain in the ass <laughs> a fucking pain in the ass <laughs> so you know, we got to do we got to do some cool stuff earlier you know just like just writing stuff you know coding stuff like that um we already know how to do but um uh and you know maybe this will be relevant throughout the conversation but um kind of banging your head on things that you don't understand, I think is very important. So even though it's yep. very painful to kind of do that, uh, you got to do that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having a drink. <laughs> I was about to ask, I've, I've been trying to crack mine, but you've got a drink. Okay, good. Then I'm going to take that as yeah, a yeah, that I can crack, crack this crack cold that. one here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're celebrating. So the, the, the failure, you know, a little bit, um, right. uh, <laughs> did a little longer than, than we expected as per usual. Uh, but then, you know, once you get that CI CD pipeline, uh, solid, it'll just be, you know, just run, make deploy on the terminal and like, and then seeing it come together. Yeah. That's really, that's that's kind of the joke with programming, right? It's that you bang your head into the wall and then you finally, it works, right? And you get the light bulb moment and it's really nice. Yeah. It's there, a bit it's like, a, best, yeah. like a drug, you know? <laughs> uh, so is, I see, it, I, I was actually uh, surprised when you told me that you were messing around with containers before the call because 
I see you still have that same attitude towards doing projects, project-based learning and learning on your own uh, that you All very day, much man. had when we met back years ago. Yeah. So maybe there's a good segue to just kind of, um, I don't know how many people are who's looking at this. Um, It'll all be recorded on YouTube me. later. So for sure, if you want to set any context, if we're getting ahead of ourselves, feel free to reel us back because we probably should. Totally. So um, for, for context, uh, for anybody who's like thinking about, hey, um, this data science thing is cool or seems interesting or, you know, I'm excited about automating machines or whatever, or like, hey, I want to dream the future. Um, like it's hard, <laughs> but it's <laughs> worth it. Um, and so my my background is, um, you know, I was born in I was born in California, but I grew up in Mexico. And for me, like this whole like, you know, life of being a professional in the states was a dream for a long time. Yeah. And and I came to the States when I was 18 um, as an American citizen, but also with a heavy accent and no cultural knowledge whatsoever. Um, and so- At 18, that's- At 18, yeah. Wow. So I had a pretty thick accent and my friends would make fun of me. Uh, and they'll also like show me like, hey, here's how you like shift your jaw and like you wanna, you know, your Down tongue to goes- Down detail, wow. Oh, yeah, exactly. No, and that that that's how it, you know, that's how it needs to be. <laughs> you you explicit about the linguistics, you know what I mean? Um, so kind of went through all that, and then um, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted, you know, I I, I'm always been a nerd and always loved math and building mm. stuff. That's always been mine. Uh, make things that solve a problem for me or my mom or my friends or you know depending on the context whoever yeah. is having that statement you know uh that might resonate to you as a product manager um and so um i just knew i wanted to build shit right and okay this whole artificial intelligence thing, uh, this data science thing is uh, new to all of us, right? Um, as yeah, a species. Uh, and so, uh, you know, without kind of harping on the buzzwords for a minute, um, that was magical to me. And just the idea of, uh, you know, what, why, don't, why don't we just automate machines to do everything so we can just chill the fuck out and... So when, enjoy our human when was your introduction to, to programming um because you went did you go into ucsb for economics I did, you I did. Around a bit? okay um, so i went to ucsb as econ because i absolutely destroyed my economics courses in high school okay like i would take i would you know i took economic in like it just made sense like I didn't have any prior knowledge, but it just clicked. And so I applied to economics and computer science and other buzz. Oh, like okay. So back then comp sci was on your radar when you were applying to college. Comp sci was on my radar, but I was okay. uh, begrudgingly considering it. Cause like <laughs> from my perspective, I didn't want to sit behind a computer all day. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> Mind you, I have like six computers in this apartment. Um, I want to come back. I, there's some questions in the chat about what's going on in your background later with all the stuff in there. Sure. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking at the comments, so so you let me know. Um, my radio radiator is going on, by the way. Sorry for the noise. I can't hear it. Uh, I think we're good. Awesome. So um, well, what are we talking about? We're talking about, yeah, majors. So I, I just like, from my perspective as a, as a human, I think back then I, I just wanted to kind of play it safe. And I felt like, Hey, I think I'm somewhat talented at this particular field of thinking, if you will. And then, uh, my, um, you know, one of my uncles, w w I look up to, um, he's an engineer, uh, and, but he's like an old school engineer. He like he writes basic and <laughs> like Fortran. Fortran and all those things. He he kept harping on on hey programming programming programming. And I was like, dude, like I don't. What is visual? Like I don't. And, and at this point, I didn't speak English, right? So like, wow. 
kind of growing up, like I, there was this like language barrier for me and that language barrier was no longer an obstacle. I think come high school or come college. Okay. Um, so in, in college, I, uh, let me, let me fast forward to my third year. I went to, you know, I was doing economics and I was doing all this stuff and I, I studied abroad in Madrid cause I, uh, you know, an American citizen, uh, you know, who is of Mexican heritage, who is of Basque ethnicity, wanted uh, to figure out my identity, right? So I'm going to Spain and trying to figure out my identity. And I'm just like, I don't fit there either. Like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so, um, you know, I thought I was going to do a PhD in economics, but uh, I was working on a research project and I realized, hey, academia kind of sucks because you have to you know jump through all these political hoops within the university sort of framework right uh, even though you might think not right that this is about the practice of advancing the human species with respect to knowledge and w what it is our sen sense of understanding of the world and the universe um, and I didn't want to deal with that um, and in Spain, I became very aggravated with the state of the the education system. Uh, you know, we complain. Within Spain or, or in just Spain? The yeah. Oh. So in in the, in the states, we have gaucho or in, at UCSB. You know, there's gaucho space and there's all this shit. Okay. You know, all these yeah. like subpar uh, technology resources that we we have at our disposal, and they're good enough right you go to spain and you know students are dealing with photocopied bricks of paper from 10 oh. years ago that okay. some student happened to take some really good notes and then you know that is the be all end all sort of study guide and i'm thinking to myself dude <laughs> we have the internet like we have spotify and the same stuff right well, like what in the actual fuck, right? Part of my French, and I'll, I'll keep it to a minimum. But like, how come we have all these resources for like, in my opinion, secondary uh, sort of, you know, from a purpose perspective, like secondary reasons. And then like education, which is like the bloodline of the economy and the bloodline of our ability as humans to perform a task to be able to get a paycheck like okay. that's not yeah. like and so that to me that was kind of kind of fucked up so when i came back to the states from studying abroad um i i took some time off school to do a startup and uh, that was that was kind of me banging my sense of identity against the wall where you know we can we can go into that but um uh we failed in you know our team failed in many different ways mm -hmm. and uh you know uh frankly i hadn't really experienced that much failure all at once oh. uh so you know we can we can go into that too but my point is that that was kind of the moment where i was like I really do need to learn to program and I need, need to stop fucking around with other stuff because the hard stuff that needs to get done. So did you uh, learn to code for the startup? Not really. So um, we, we, our team had a very talented programmer who okay. specialized in PHP and JavaScript. And at the time I called it JavaScript because <laughs> I was struggling with English, but um and you know i hate php uh for that reason but um you know at that time i felt very inadequate because and you know this kind of relates to uh jealousy in the workplace we can get mm -hmm. to that too but um i felt incredibly inadequate because uh, you know up to this point i feel like i've wasted all this time doing other stuff and this is really what I should have spent all this time doing is so it really learning how to build when, software. I see. So is that when it really clicked the interest in programming for you? Was it during the startup when you had your teammate that was when when we had when we had paying customers, Jason, 
when we had PayPal notifications going off that we were getting payments and I was getting more emails about bugs in the production application than mm -hmm. we had happy customers. And I felt powerless to fix the application. Right. That was when I said, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? What is, what is microeconomics anyway? What the fuck? You what know, was your like, role at the, at the startup? Were you the... I, I founded the startup, the dude. I, yeah. okay. I rallied yeah. the team and like, you know, I, um, I made a lot of mistakes and, 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 you know, my, I think my team, uh, kicked ass and, uh, you know, I, I love and, 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 and very much respect those individuals. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it was a wake up call that, Hey, you're not ready, dude. Like you need to go back and learn. So, okay, yeah. so um, did you go back to school? I went and finished school, uh, for, well, finished my economics degree. And cause like at, at that point, uh, Spanish is all I could really put on my resume. Um, oh, so okay. I, I went and finished my econ degree and I finished my technology management certificate. Right. And for anybody who's a student at UCSB, TMP is great. Love TMP. Um, it really gives you a framework for thinking about how to approach entrepreneurship um, mm -hmm. because a lot of entrepreneurs get carried away with ideas and this idea, it's not about, it's not about ideas, it's about problem statements that actual individuals have that you can validate with evidence and that you've iterated through a series of solution iterations and you have found something that clicks yeah uh, and then you explore that right so it's a science experiment it's not a i am the chosen one let me go and build this magical thing like no <laughs> i'm sorry that's not that's not how it is um you know you might be enlightened in life and great but like for 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 a majority of entrepreneurs like it, it's a it's a science experiment um so for me, entrepreneurship was certainly a science experiment of trial and failure. And you also respect. did the new venture competition, right? That's right. And so right. was your new venture competition, and just for anyone listening, new venture competition done through the technology management program at UCSB, annual startup competition, fantastic opportunity if you're a UCSB student interested in business and startups, definitely consider it, see if you can squeeze it in. Um, but so the startup, you went back to school and then did you do the new venture competition after? No, I did it before. Oh, and did that did lead into the startup that you That's did? what was like the catalyst to be like, hey, let's, let's go, okay. let's go, right? Um, and then everything kind of failed because we weren't good enough at technology and we're all like, okay, and so a few of my, you know, a few of the team members went to explore things like Hack Reactor or Galvanize. And I'm all like, shit, I can't afford any of that. So I guess I have to learn this on my own. Hmm. So that was, that was kind of rough um, from my perspective. Yeah, that not have... felt pretty shitty. Yeah, because I'm, I'm like, my parents living in Tijuana can't pay for you know, an $18,000 program. Right. Uh, but, you know, here I am trying to, you know, do technology things. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you, 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 uh, and, and, th and th this relates to habits, right? Um, how do you as an individual um, design your life such that you can, right? right. And, and, um, so, dude, it was a lot of sitting in front of the computer reading tutorials that I didn't understand for technologies that are not relevant to me anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. out of trial and, error. Uh, and I think that's more or less how you and I kind of came to meet each other, right? Because I showed up at the Data Science Club being all excited. And so is that where we're arcing towards now? Is that after we can. you finished your degree we and then what happened next? So I finished my degree um, and um, uh, I got a job. I got a job at this uh, small shop doing some 
uh very basic web development so it was like html okay. css some javascript deploy to ec2 okay. whoa right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some static bullshit um and i um dude frankly i was scared i was scared of like I was scared of trying for higher and harder technologies and, and, and things. Interesting. Uh, um, Almost like imposter syndrome. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Because yeah. At the, up to this point, I'm going to realize like, I, you know, I'd worked with uh, the technical founders and in the, in, in the startup that I had worked on. And uh, I felt incredibly inadequate. I felt I couldn't contribute. I felt mm -hmm. like to the biggest problems that we had at hand during that period of time where we failed. Um, and so I felt like, can I do this? Is it a waste of my time to try? Should I just give up and do other stuff? Wow. Um, and so, um, you know, we can get into all sorts of topics from here. We can get into a sense of identity or a sense of self-love or, or whatever. Um, I came across, um, I came across, uh, this book called mindset hmm. by Carol Dweck and anybody who is interested in, uh, recalibrating their sense of, uh, capability by all means, check that out. Uh, Carol Dweck is, I think uh, one of my foundations now um, for how I approach doing it live and, and <laughs> failure, uh, because if you don't try your success is not a function of being enlightened. Success is a function of failure. The yeah. more you yeah. fail, the more you succeed, period. So what you want to do is want to fail fast, right? You want to fail you want you want to try to you you want to try to manage the risk of failure, but you want to fail a fuckload. <laughs> I'm gonna fail like I don't want to you know I, like I don't want to like let me give you an example. I don't want to fail deploying you know 200 servers on AWS using Terraform because <laughs> that's be an expensive be mistake. Twenty five thousand dollar you know failure, but you know I can try with you know T two micro instances where i have alerts and you know what i mean like so, <laughs> yeah. so from an engineering standpoint it makes sense but also from a do i have the ability to comprehend this concept or can i learn this shit? yes like failure is important right so um so um and and, and um one of the one of the really uh i think uh inflection points for me personally and and i uh i'm i'm uh, I'm sure somebody in the audience might have some, some feelings around this is, uh, you know, I'm not getting this. This is hard. What the fuck? Am I just not smart enough? Yeah. Right. And like it happens all the time in tech, you know, why, why are we even thinking about whether, you know, we're smart enough or not? Like <laughs> that's not the variable, dude. The variable is like your brain has not developed the pathways you know, biologically speaking, such that you have a mental model for that concept. So why don't you go ahead and try many times until you get it right? And so, That's, yeah, I, I, I feel like, of, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, you go ahead. Yeah, my turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I feel like you definitely have to stick with things, obviously, right? Like you can't just give up immediately, right? Like that's what our parents always tell us, you know? Um, but when sometimes you are better off, right? If you're just not like for me, it was chemistry back in college. I went into UCSB as a chemistry major in the, you know, UCSB's college of creative studies. And I was way out of my league in that college, by the way. Yeah. But regardless of that, like I, I didn't have the mental model for chemistry. And so yeah. I was failing a lot, like you said. Right. And I, Eventually, obviously, I'm not working in chemistry anymore, and so I switched out of it. But I, I think 
a lot of students or young professionals find themselves at that crossroads, right? Do I continue on this path? And if it's not a question of, am I smart enough? It's, if I put more effort into it, can I go down this route? But then on the flip side, if there is something else that you are interested in or want to explore other options, it's really hard to make that decision as a young person, yeah. right? Where are you going to invest your time and your energy? Um, if the thing you're pursuing right now maybe isn't working out that well for you. And I don't have a lot of answers for that. I think that's a lot. <laughs> I think that's a lot of what individual people have to figure out for themselves. Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, listen, I I'm with you, man, on that. It's hard to, you know, you, you can be an orange and you can try really hard to be an apple <laughs> and you're just not going to be an apple, sweetie. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, exactly. And I mean, I feel like that's the decision I eventually came yeah. to is like, I would be in study sessions with other students in chemistry and I, they were just recalling things that I could not. And of yeah. course I could have made the decision to just buckle down study more but then you're retaking classes but at that I'll point ask you, jason why why would you buckle down like why why is chemistry the answer in that in that and that and that's where you know from a product management perspective understanding the intrinsic motivation for why yeah. you're doing something versus another is, i think it's important so i think like but i do have an answer i've got some some food for thought on that was for me in my case i did a lot of chemistry back in high school. We had a whole biotechnology program. And so I interned at a local stem cell research facility and I had fun working in the lab. I found the stuff and the material very interesting. But then the problem was once I got to college and I was taking these chemistry classes, and these are still only the introductory chem classes, but yeah. that was when the rubber met the road for me, right? And at that point, I made the decision that it wasn't really something I was that interested in after all, or at least wow. I didn't have the passion or like you said, the intrinsic motivation to continue with chemistry because yeah. I saw all of these classes I would have to take. And I was only through my first quarter, maybe my second quarter. And for me, I guess I was lucky in that the realization came very quickly, right? Like yeah. very, very suddenly I realized that it wasn't for me. But yeah, that, that was, that's what happened in my case. Yeah. So I think you had fun probably with the labs and, and with the process of, of, you know, adding value there. Um, and I think something um, that is very challenging for, for us humans is to not confuse uh, your calling as, as a human uh, you know, where, where you're doing the, you, you're doing something you feel truly passionate about right. versus right. something where you have gotten some validation, uh, which is extrinsic or, or outside or, or, or endogenous or whatever the term you want to throw at it. Um, and so, yeah. you know, yeah, I think you put it really me, well. I got validation for economics, right? I got validation from my teacher I got the highest score in the whole class. And that doesn't mean shit at the end of the day, right? Like, I don't want to be an economist. I don't want to have to think about inflation rates uh, as well as <laughs> banks. Like, yield curves. <laughs> how is that value to the universe? Like, how is that value? Like, that's not solving global warming, right? Um, so from my perspective, like, like, you know, I realized, and, and that was that was the part of the identity crisis, right? Like when I went to Spain was, I thought I wanted to do a PhD in economics. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that's what it looks like to do that. And that's, that's what you end up doing in life. And for me, I was like, I don't want to do that. I'd rather try this other stuff because this feels actionable to me, mm -hmm. given the urgency that the world needs today so that's where i went and failed <laughs> repeatedly in many different ways so it sounds you know, like you're pretty 
purpose driven than at least more than a lot of people I've met. Um, Cause you're talking about very large problems to solve, right? Like contributing value for education. And you just mentioned global warming is something you're interested in solving or contributing towards. Has that always been the case? How long does that go back? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so I think for me, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm enlightened or anything. I think I'm just like a product of, uh, you know, uh, my mom's meals when I was growing up and, and sort of my, you know, the love I got from my family and, and the kind of the encouragement to try and, uh, to try hard, uh, and to not accept no for an answer and just keep fucking trying. <laughs> um, but I think I'm lucky and I'm privileged in that, you know, I come from, I come from a different country where I grew up in the slums of Tijuana. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could decorate myself as a victim and saying like, Oh, I'm not, you know, you know, privileged, like most kids here who like grow up with lawyer parents and they already know you should major in statistics because, Hey, data science is taking over the, for me, that was not the case for me. I, you know, my friends, grew up in gangs. My friends grew up hungry. Uh, my friends grew up not knowing what they were going to eat tonight. You know, um, contamination is a really big problem in non-urban, non-first world societies. Yeah. And for me, that was very, that to me, that was natural. That was normal. That was that that's what I had seen when I came to Santa Barbara. That was like a punch in the face where. You met, was it you dude, met people on the other side of the spectrum? Well, dude, nobody is aware of what's going on. Right. You know, you have IV parties and like, you have like, you know, fraternity people are paying $800 <laughs> a quarter to, you know, have friends and things. And, you know, people are, you know, and, and that's, and I'm not saying that's not okay. But for me, like, I'm thinking to myself, like, we are very privileged here. Meanwhile, <laughs> what is going on? Just, like just a couple yeah. miles south, really. Exactly. So, yeah. so I think like, you know, I'm not going to decorate myself with being like, enlightened with purpose, but when when problem statements are tangible and they ultimately have an effect in somebody's ability to feel something mm -hmm. or not feel mm -hmm. something then you know we're, we're those problems are real and and uh for me like for that reason education has always been really important education is the reason why i'm sitting here on this call versus okay being a mechanic in Tijuana, right? Um, right? So, yeah. Wow. Mic drop. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> kind of hard to follow up on that one. Oh, man. But I think um, you mentioned education, and that was a big reason why I wanted to do these live stream conversations with, you know, there's Tim, Sam, my friends, Matt, Giuliano. You might know Matt. You might remember him from the Data Science Club. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've been getting a lot of questions from current students, UCSB students, that a lot of them seem to be majoring in comp sci stats. Um, a couple aren't. And a lot of them are just looking for a lot of the general questions of, you know, how do I get X role? Um, what's your day to day like? That sort of thing. Any advice or tips, networking? Um, and so I felt like it'd be good to not just give my opinion to them, but talk to you folks, right? Um, and get your thoughts on a lot of these questions that are coming up. And so sure. to that end, I wanted to get your thoughts back on project-based learning. Um, Cause we did a lot of that obviously in the data science club, right? That yeah. was the whole purpose of that club. I loved that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if you remember, but we had that rule where there was no homework in the club, right? If you're in that room for the data science club, you're working on a project, you're not working on your stats or your comp sci homework. 
Um, yeah, I recall. The, I, I, think, I, I have a feeling you probably made that rule. <laughs> dude, yeah. In a lot of ways, yeah, you're my first mentor once I switched over from chemistry over and I started pursuing stats. And I remember you came in uh, on one of our weekly meetings and yeah. like, hey, are you the president? And I was like, yeah. Like, my name is David Campos. I work at, at that time, you're at Impact, at Impact Radius. That's right. Um, and I thought the next words out of your mouth were going to be like, and we're hiring. Are you interested? I thought you were scouting me out. I thought like, oh, this is the payoff for this club. And then you're like, oh, hey, I'd like to join the club. And I was like, oh, that's good. I'll take that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, um, right before I finished my econ degree, I took this regression class right uh oh and, i see way at the end uh yeah it was the well, it was the last two quarters i took regression analysis um we were using evus for that what is that um yeah what the fuck uh, <laughs> that's another use... topic the the tech stacks that they choose to teach in at apparently universities. Uh, apparently academia does not like open source but okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, dude, I, I didn't like my job. Um, I didn't like my job at all. Um, right. and yeah, I know we're on the record and that's okay. And Hey, uh, you live and you learn and, and then you, you make better choices when you, uh, when you assess what you've done. Uh, and I was doing, um, I was doing tech support and I was answering angry emails from marketers at the time. <laughs> And like, frankly, I would think to just read the docs. Like, just fuck. <laughs> I bet they love that answer, huh? Well, I didn't say that, right? Because like that would have gotten me in trouble, and I did get in trouble. <laughs> but, um, from my perspective, like, like you know, and and mad mad respect to anybody who works tech support or any sort of you know customer facing, uh, because. Mm -hmm customers are angry like <laughs> you know uh but uh i i didn't i didn't like what i was doing uh out of college out of having finished like the full stack of degrees that i did um and i wanted i wanted to do i wanted to i wanted to exp i wanted to keep harping on uh technology i wanted to learn yeah. more and i wanted to i wanted to get a degree again you know i felt like i wasted my fucking time I felt like my degree, my all my degrees were bullshit, and I felt like, hey, can we, can I do, can I rewind the time and do this again, please? <laughs> uh, and so the company was uh, actually, uh, you know, Impact Radius at the time was starting a data science department, and I was like, hey, that sounds pretty similar to what I did in regression analysis. Um, okay. Yeah. Which I struggled really hard in that class. Uh, but I, I kept, uh, you know, I, I was very close with the professor because I would keep coming to office hours and, you know, even though I was like struggling, uh, in the class, I was grasping a lot that, uh, you know, you don't get tested on, on the test. Uh, and so, um, you know, I went and took regression analysis again. I would took the one, uh, I think it's one forty B. And I did really well there. And that was some validation to me like, hey, if you try hard enough, you can do this. Uh, so when Impact Radius was starting that data science department, um, you know, um, the guy, so I did orientation at Impact Radius. Uh, Rob. I remember Rob, yeah. Did orientation with me because we got hired around the same time. And he would talk about data and I would be like, dude, how is that not magic? Like that's, that's magic. All right. Like that sounds really cool. And I remember I bugged him really hard and, and, um, cause I wanted to explore that, but I, I didn't want to get him in trouble either. Uh, but I, I would just ask him a lot of questions about data science and things. And, uh, I wasn't finding mentorship that I needed right. to be able to, find my way into data science right so uh my friend nathan fritter said hey like yo there's a this thing you see you should check it out i'm like yeah <laughs> let's go nerd out on some projects things you know and i'd done startup weekend so 
I had already failed and succeeded through designing business models and doing project based things. Okay. So I think like that's where, you know, we can kind of meet, you know, kind of full circle at, at uh, you know, the data science club and, and right. you know, kind of show, be like, hey, I want to learn things, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. And you guys were probably, yeah, you guys were the first, you, Nate, who else was on your team? Ravi, right? Ravi. Yeah. Um, you guys were the first people to actually complete and present a full data science project with the club. And I think that's when things clicked for a lot of people because seeing you as an alumni come back, I mean, that really showed that you were investing a lot into this, right? And that gave a lot of validity, I think, for students that were, and including myself to an extent, like you're always kind of wondering, is my time better spent doing these projects or my classes, et cetera, all yeah. different ways you could try to invest your time professionally. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, seeing you guys complete a project, I'm sure that was great for the club. So I have to thank you for that. <laughs> I think that gave well, a lot of people a North Star to shoot for. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, um, you know, there, 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 there are a lot of people that, um, you know, are finding for a sense of community and in, in whatever uh, sort of uh, endeavors that they're looking to, or let me let me let me rewind. There are a lot of people who are trying to do things. Period. And if there is a community that you can be a part of and interact with and 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 uh, post and get <laughs> solid validation and and feedback uh like that that makes a difference like the sense of the sense of uh community is huge so i think for me dude like Ra ravi ravi is one of my best friends uh and i you know he he was on you know i already knew nate you know nate nate and i worked together on it a... through the club or were you guys friends yeah we met at that? the club at the club really we oh, met shit. at the club wow i'm like who is this guy with the long hair he had long hair at the time oh yeah he did I have long hair now because of the pandemic but um i remember i remember being like yo this this guy seems to know what he's talking about with time series things uh hey what's up <laughs> <laughs> uh and you know fast forward like you know uh I still ask him questions sometimes about PySpark or whatever, but, yeah. uh, you know, having a, a sense of community, uh, having a sense of like, Hey, I'm not going at this alone. Uh, yeah, so I can talk to other people about this, um, it is really important. So anybody who's out there kind of trying to break into anything, I would encourage to find a community that you, uh, you know, can, participate and so, so thank you back uh jason for for <laughs> yeah. you know, going and failing at chemistry so the rest of us can have a sense of belonging yeah i i still think back to like you said the community of that club was just really infectious you know all of these nerds <laughs> at santa barbara trying to yeah. fit these different models and clean their data and afterwards yeah, we all went out for beer it was just a great time you know it was a good way to try to learn these topics and everything totally. um, and you mentioned mentorship uh because you said i think you said you weren't finding that at impact right that's right and i think a lot of students and young people think that mentorship has to be someone older right that's typically how you think of it right someone that's yeah. sometimes much farther in their career than you are um which is great if you can find that in someone that is more much more experienced than you and is willing yeah. to give you their time but it sounds like you were able to find, I guess you could say like a proxy for mentorship by just the community and the people that were trying to achieve the same goal as you, right? You're able to yeah. get questions and answers from Nate, from Ravi, even though they didn't necessarily have more experience than you, it definitely sounded like it helped you create the project that you guys ended up presenting. Absolutely. And I think you're hitting on, on a point that that is really important kind of uh indirectly and and it's it's this sense of ego right we all have ego and that that's just like a natural attribute that we have <laughs> as humans ego is not helpful 
ego is not helpful if you're trying to grow in your career. Ego is not helpful if you're trying to learn to program or if you're trying to learn data science. Ego is really not helpful. It's the opposite. It's it's garbage. Um, so, you know, I'll tell you. Um, did you feel I was, like, I, I've got a question. Hopefully this isn't cutting too deep, but did you have to swallow your ego at all when you dude, came to the All club? the time, every time, every oh, like, like, oh, okay, yeah. Dude, it was, for me, I'm like, what am, I'm two years older than everybody in this club and I already graduated and I have a job. Everyone's asking how to get a job. I already have a job. Did you I get don't a lot like of questions job. about that? People try to like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's impact hiring. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, we, we, we can talk about that and, you know, no, no, club. sorry. No, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I yeah, know, but but I know people are, are always asking how to get a job in data science, so we can get <laughs> that. But um, you know, um, it when you're when you're you know wanting to do software or when you're wanting to do data science, which ends up being the same thing, just with pepper it with math. Yeah. Um. You did not invent electricity. You did not invent, you know, wires and transistors and processors and memory. And you didn't invent how we store information on metal, how we get things, you know, how, how we get rocks to think. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love Follow? that meme. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's coming from Sam Chapin. Uh, <laughs> uh, that one of you probably remember Sam from HG Insights. Uh, he's one of my mentors. Um, oh, shout yeah, out yeah. To, to Sam. He's a fucking unicorn. Um, but yo, neither of us, none of us invented rocks thinking and, and we're just kind of like we're enjoying the 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 legacy that our our early past humanity has granted to us and so we cannot expect to know any of this shit we can't expect for our mental health like dude like this whole linux thing like this guy like programs in in a green room like Linus. Yeah, Linus. Tor yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, I can't pronounce his last name. Like the guy invented Linux and then Git. And <laughs> Pretty he's crazy. still around. Yeah. Like yeah. and then like every, you know, not every, but like most enterprise applications running on Linux using on Git. some EC2 derivative of AWS. Um, so like it's pretty fucking overwhelming. <laughs> like, especially compared to like older industries, you know, exactly. Like, like people have been studying engineering for a long time, how to make a building, right. That goes back thousands of years, but exactly. Now there's this new kid on the block that has progressed so far so quickly. And yeah, just to your point, it's a lot it, to try to feel like you have to learn because it is so new. I feel like exactly. Maybe think it, I should know more, right? I should know farther down the text, yeah. Line, so to speak. And, and something, something I did a very poor job was, um, and and uh, the, the, you know, this is where where the rubber meets the road is. You have to be okay with not knowing what you don't know, and you have to be okay with not understanding what you don't understand. And the sooner that you accept that the the you know from a mental health perspective you liberate yourself to okay do i need to learn that okay let me get a stick and write it put it on the board I'm gonna learn that um i think as humans um we want to come across as though we know what we're talking about uh or you know th there's some book that talks about autonomy mastery and purpose mm -hmm. and so want to master things right we want to be really good at things uh it's really hard from a human nature perspective to come into something and 
you know, you're learning Docker and somebody's already inventing Kubernetes and then yeah, yeah. somebody went like, like, dude, what the fuck? Like, how just are you supposed you to get back all this? Just when you think you've sort of caught the wave, there's another one yeah. coming, like you said. Okay, Docker, I understand that. And then there's this 10 foot tall wave called Kubernetes that you don't even know how to pronounce correctly. <laughs> exactly. So, 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 you know, uh, you know, we can, we can talk about like tips for getting a job and things, but like, it starts with, I, you know, your sense of identity, like, and your sense of purpose, right? Is this, is this something I want to do? Is this something I feel really passionate about? Like, you know, and, and your, your passion, your motivation can come from a lot of different places, right? Yeah. Maybe you just yeah. love algorithms or you love electricity or whatever, maybe for me, you know, I'm not going to get into that, but like, um, for me, I, I love this stuff, right? This stuff is it, like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm writing code. It's the middle of the pandemic and like things yeah, work see your editor back there. <laughs> and, and like, how is this not magic? You know, all of a sudden like this shit's going on somewhere and like, okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, it, it starts with, uh, being okay with, not knowing being okay you know just giving yourself a break and just kind of like okay all right let's harp on this for 10 hours today if we don't get it right today we can try tomorrow it's okay and then i find that the longer it takes me to learn something uh the more rewarding it is when i get it and i'm like oh shit this is epic um spark took me a while to learn um yeah that's a that can be a complex one different different mental model yeah yeah definitely you're trying to ssh into the server and you're like sshing into one of them but like there's <laughs> three or five or ten you know what i mean like that yeah that was the hardest <laughs> i kind of had the same experience when i started at microsoft because app service the cloud service i work on is distributed system, right? Obviously it's a, it's a, we have global data centers and everything. And then within a data center, there's all the different roles. You know, we have a data role, there's the compute, the storage, everything else to make it all run. And it's like, shit, I just came out of college with a stats degree. And that was a really steep learning curve very quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was, so what, what was hard about that for you? Like what, um, and, and I, I want to rewind a little bit if that's okay too. Like, yeah, you know, you talked about some failures in chemistry and, you know, I, I imagine young Jason uh, in college being like, hey, chemistry is hard. Let me try this other thing called data science. Like that, that, that's pretty hard too, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's that? How's, how did know, that happen? How did you tackle that mentally? Like what? <laughs> yeah. the So it's kind of two parts, like the fall, from chemistry was really bad because I had it was like midterms freshman year and then like physics and chemistry back to back and I knew I failed I think I walked out halfway through one of those exams because it was, it was obvious like I knew the writing was on the wall I one way or another I just wasn't cut out for it I like we said earlier I couldn't really fit the mental model together um, yeah and so that was a pretty tough pill to swallow um, I went back to see my family for a weekend um, immediately following that. Like I called him up and said, Hey guys, I'm coming home, <laughs> you know, bad week. Uh, and so I went back and, uh, sort of like regrouped mentally. And then when I got back to school, um, I printed out a sheet of all of the different majors at UCSB. And I just yeah. started like crossing them out. Like, okay, I know I don't want to do dance or film. And then I started crossing them out. And then I got to things like economics, math, stats, computer science, and statistics, comp sci, those were things I had never been introduced to before college. We had yeah. no, I would, we did have stats, I didn't take that, but we didn't have any computer science in high school. And so I just started sitting in on classes. Um, and then I you know, sat in on econ, that was cool, but stats scenes with data science, when I was Googling that, that seems like it was a pretty um, opportunistic time to try to move into that field and once yeah but go ahead how do you pull the trigger i mean you, you you're mentioning you don't have any background statistics it's just kind of this buzzword 
with a funny spelling? Like what, how did you, <laughs> how does that work? So luckily for me, not all UCSB students or students period will have this luxury depending on where they're going to school. But since I was in that college of creative studies, I had priority enroll times. So I was able to get into a stats class and get into a computer science class when a lot of times you can't even do that, right? And that's a whole other problem if the major yeah. is impacted at the university. Like, <laughs> good luck if you're not in the major. Uh, so luckily for me, I took a stats class at the end of my uh, freshman year, along with a comp sci class. It was MATLAB. It was Engineering 3. And um, I continued math. I was already taking math classes for chemistry. Yeah. And it was this actually really beautiful moment um, where... I was learning about like counting problems and statistics, right? Like how to do the probabilities for poker hands and you do all the N shoes R and everything. Um, and then we were going over the same thing in the computer science class. And we were learning how to program that, right? How to simulate and do Monte Carlo simulations for all that stuff. And so that's when I knew all of the puzzle pieces kind of came together and I was like, all right, this is something I can get behind. Um, but then going back to the earlier points about you know, should a student or young person like not go down a path if it's being difficult? The thing was is that I got some validation, right? I did very well in all of those classes. It seemed like I yeah. had some innate ability for that material versus chemistry yeah. where I was barely treading water. Um, and I, I, so I feel like if there are any students listening, it's important to kind of listen to that if you're, if you're swimming upstream, it's not going to be a fun time, but it's different for everybody, yeah. right? If there's something that's really driving you, if you are very, very passionate about the material, then you're going to get things done. But um, your time, you, yeah, just look around, I would say. Try to look around for yeah, the yeah. material. Yeah, and I, I would say, um, you know, even if you're struggling at first uh, and, and you're finding that there's a magic in it or there's there's some kind of, you know, unexplicable excitement about something. Sorry. Uh, I would say try again, <laughs> give it another try. Uh, because ultimately, and th this happened to me in college, right? Um, ultimately you're going to fail at something. Uh, and, and that's okay. Try again. Right. Uh, and you know, that happens to, to us in software every time we do a push and, GitHub shows us a failed build and you're like, fuck, what did I do wrong? Is that? Um, so I would say, you know, like, it's okay to fail. It's okay to try again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think someone could make the argument that I might have called it too soon. With chemistry? With chemistry, yeah. Yeah. It worked out for me because I think also thinking back, I, I met professors, right? That's what I wanted to do. Like that was the whole dream was to get a PhD, yeah. like what you said, but for, for chemistry. Yeah. And then I met more professors. I met some at the, the research facility back in high school, but then I met more professors. I was like, oh, actually, I don't know if I really want to take this career path. Yeah. I feel like yeah. when you're young, you take a lot of assumptions on – the topic you're interested in and what the actual work is going to be like at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something we should talk about like day-to-day -day activities and, and the day? I feel like we've talked about everything kind of preceding data science uh, or not everything. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, data science. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, um, yeah, I mean, Dude, data science is crazy. Um, we're, we're building this brain called the internet and it has a lot of storage and it has a lot of nodes to process. Uh, and all of a sudden you can harness um, some part of the network to do some jobs, right? As yeah. you call it in data science. Um, and so uh, I think we're still pretty early in, in, in the, in the maturity of, of the field uh, in practice, right? I mean, yeah. you still have to click buttons to get uh, infrastructure up instead of like having that fully automated. 
you know, automating sort of uh, EMR is still kind of kind of a pain using lambdas or Airflow. Like it's still not, you know, uh, DevOps is still a pain in the ass uh, as it relates to setting up a, an app server, an RDS mm -hmm. server, or like a, a database server and like a load balancer and all the things like um, for, you know, from a data science perspective, like, you know, I think there's a lot of hype with artificial intelligence and like, uh, like, uh, <laughs> sounds like you got some opinions on that. And all this garbage, right? Um, and we're, dude, we're, we're crawling. We're walking slow, like, you know, we're, we're, we're ingesting uh data we're we're transforming it so that we can use it and we're when you say we do you mean the industry or are you talking about at your your company i'm team? talking in in my team i we you know we we're able to you know pip install some some packages that you know right uh use sophisticated machine learning algorithms and things um and you know some people are machine learning engineers where their job is to, you know, ever so slightly improve this algorithm so that you get 0.1 better precision right. accuracy. But, you know, while Google, Microsoft, Amazon are, you know, having budgets to kind of throw at these problems, the rest of the world, yeah. like, is not you know so uh there's a long tail of humanity in the enterprise world where data science means okay let's let's hit this api set up a bucket throw data in here let's look at the schema and figure out how to look at it and how to analyze it let's figure out what questions we'd like to answer uh because i think like a lot of people think data science is this like you know, magic machine gun that you can you can just throw shoot a anything. problem with enough it's, ML algorithms. <laughs> it's not. It's a machine uh, or data science is more like a like a like a sniper rifle, right? Like you have to be focused on what are you trying to answer, what are you trying to understand, and then there's a lot of precision there. So uh, you know, it, it, um, I'll some, kind of stop there, but like. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. There's something I want to get your your thoughts on because when you were talking about just a minute ago and with data science, but you're talking about concepts like provisioning infrastructure and using Git and all these other tools, um, advanced tools, some of them. And a lot of students come that are aiming to become data scientists. They come from statistics, right? And so they come from or mathematics, right? everything but computer science, and even then to a degree, the problem is that you may have a very, very good understanding of the theoretics behind regression or behind some of the unsupervised learning methods, right? But I feel like a lot of those students, and I could be wrong here, are they're not as competitive for actually getting the job because if you don't have familiarity with some of these tools like Git or if you've never actually worked with a server before or you don't know what an API is, yeah. that's a lot of concepts to ramp up on where you wouldn't be immediately useful to the company. I got but if you. you're on the flip side where you had knowledge of Git APIs, all these more basic infrastructure technologies, but maybe you're a little gray on some of the advanced topics, you'd be a lot more useful to the company right then off the get-go. Totally. Uh, should we take a, a small bio break uh, and uh, I can I can dive into I have opinions about sort of what uh, yo yeah. the the broad stack needs to be uh, rather than like hey I'm really good at this one thing yeah 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 let's do it what do you think three minutes uh, four minutes sure let's... we can we can regroup and let's can, do at, yeah. the, at the ten at the eight oh ten or at the eight ten yeah yeah yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you in four minutes. Okay. All right.
All right. We are back. <laughs> Where did we leave off? <laughs> uh i i think you were talking about uh or you were kind of exploring this notion of uh math or uh oh yeah right you know, trying to break into data science stats, but yeah. coming from different backgrounds and so yeah yeah what what are your thoughts on that like the math versus all of the yeah so you know um As a human who's been through kind of the ringer of like, what do I learn? What do I focus on this weekend? Why, you know, what do I need to learn over the next couple of months? Like it, uh, I think like, so the, the best advice I ever received um, or the first starter advice right. uh, comes from Tony Spataro. Uh, he, he was a, a lead architect at Rightscale, um, a company in Santa Barbara that was acquired by Flexera. And to Tony Spataro was like a mentor to me in the most indirect way possible because I was doing uh, I was doing enterprise sales there, uh, and so I was talking about cloud and you know, but I was just talking about it. And I wanted to write the code and I wanted to build the things. <laughs> Uh, and I asked them like, dude, how do I learn the things you're doing? <laughs> how do I, how do I become a Tony Spataro? Right. And you know, that, you know, that's where putting your ego away is, is helpful. Uh, and, and praising somebody, if, if you feel that they do things that you want to do and you're excited about. So I asked him, I was like, Hey, uh, and he said, find a project that you're passionate about, find something right, that right. you care about, find something you care about and go build some shit and go build some shit about that project and see to it that it gets there, <laughs> right. you know? Um, and so just, just learning, you know, just learning computer vision or just learning a little bit of PHP or just learning like, I don't know, PyTorch for the sake of learning. That's, that's garbage. Right. right? Yeah. Um, even if, even if the instructor is good, or even if you <laughs> feel, if, even if you feel validated, like, Oh, I get this. Like, no. <laughs> Rewind. Why are we doing this? Uh, you know, eventually if, if, and when you get a job um, doing data science or whatever, there's going to be a project. There's going to be some tangible output that's going to be expected on the other side of the time interval and all the cups of coffee you've had. Mm -hmm. Like there's going to be some expectation of a tangible deliverable, a product, whatever, you know, terminology your stakeholders want to use. Um, and so project driven learning is the most effective uh, in my experience um, across everybody who I've seen cross the chasm into any measure of success in the field. Um, because, you know, if, if we're trying to make a website about data science and you know what I'm talking about, like that needs to get built, it needs to get deployed it needs to have authentication enabled. It needs to have authorization. It needs to have uh, a database that is encrypted. It needs to have, you know, it like, yeah. And, and so as a function of the requirements of the project, you learn. And, and not so, only do you learn, but you learn how these different concepts and tools interact with each other, right? Because exactly. If, if you just do a class on regression, sure, you like run an R script and you get data. But if you're doing a project where you're trying to run a regression analysis on some data set, you're going to have to go and get your own data, first of all, right? And maybe you yeah. have to read that from a non-standard format or something, right? And Correct. Then you so, go down the rabbit hole from there. 
that's right. And and I you know I took uh, took two quarters of just regression. Not once has that been useful in the world, <laughs> right? Like. Sure, the the concept is helpful, like understanding, but like, have I done any regression in my job as a data scientist? No, <laughs> not at all. Like regression is absolutely uh, not useful. <laughs> so, you know, as a mental model, it's helpful. Yeah, sure. But go make something, go make something, go make something, go fail at it feel whatever you need to feel get through those feelings come back to it and keep harping on it until it's done were, were you and saying then, regression is not useful as a topic or not useful just learning in its own silo um that that's a great that's a great question to, to uh, regression is very useful um in that a lot of uh sub branches of data science and stati well, statistics and therefore data science an application of statistics and computer science um it, it you know a lot of a lot of a lot of these sub fields mm -hmm. depend on regression to exist regression is a foundation for those things to exist right um but when you're a data scientist you're not you're not writing you know, code to do a regression. You are uh, writing code to deploy infrastructure. You're writing code to consume data. You're writing code to figure out what the fuck the data is. Like yeah. you're writing code to figure out like, do I have any missing values here? Like what data type is this? Oh, I thought it was, it was an integer type and it's a float. Like, you know, I, you know, why is this, why is the ID column a float? Like, doesn't make, you know what I mean? Like you're dealing with like very rudimentary problems such that you can get to do the modeling stuff. And the modeling really is like 5% at most of the yeah. job <laughs> where in reality, you're just, you're like, you're, you're a plumber, right? You're, you're plumbing you're, yeah. you're making these artifacts such that the data goes through and gets transformed and it's useful, right? And, that, and, 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 and the industry has begun to coin this term data engineer, yeah. right? Yeah. When, where, where the data science, and like, from my perspective, it's all the same shit, right? You either can take a, a data project from end to end through its life cycle you can't <laughs> so that again project-based learning go get some data uh so sorry i'm like all over the place um but you know find something you're passionate about right a lot of people have been passionate about covid uh as far as like the job posts we've put out and uh, applicants that are applying a lot of them have covid on the resume covid dashboards and whatnot yeah Go find something you're actually passionate about. <laughs> Go get some data. Yeah. Go put that data somewhere. Uh, Go transform that data. Load that data after you transformed it somewhere else. You know, do the whole ETL thing. Right. And then do right. something interesting with that. Yeah. Do something yeah. useful. Something that yeah. actually helps somebody. And then go talk about it. And you know, if you don't get a job, like hit me up and I'll help you with your project. Like, uh, because you should like, um, but like, again, life cycle of the project is so important. Right. I'll stop there. Cause I'm rambling. Well, I think everything you said is, I mean, I agree with it, obviously like project-based learning helped me get my own internships back in college. And then, um, the data science club, you could think of that, like the actual making of it and managing of it was a project, right? It wasn't something I did for a class or anything like that. I wasn't paid to do it. Quite the opposite yeah. sometimes. <laughs> and Same. it helped me get uh, my current job right now, right? And I think the mechanics of actually achieving something that you're just learning about in the silo of a classroom, that really helps you 
become more competitive and sure much more skilled too but i think if there are any students that listen to this this question always came up back in the day it was like i i'm you know my name's cho i'm a college student i'm paying an ungodly amount of money to be here for my statistics degree or my math degree or data science degree and you're telling me that to get hired i have to do this other project that i am not getting credit for or something like that and that was always such a difficult conversation to have with people and i remember we would tell students like they'd ask that and then they'd say like how are you going to scale all of this project-based learning to do you remember those meetings we'd have at the beginning of the quarter where we'd sell the club we'd do our big advertisements and give them a rundown of how the club works and some people would ask, like, how are you possibly going to accommodate all 300 people of us in this room? And I would be square with them. I tell them most of you aren't going to stick around. Like a lot of you are going to pay the 20 bucks because it's the start of the quarter. But by midterms, half of you aren't going to be here. And by two yeah. weeks after that, it'll be a quarter. And so I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but I, I feel like it's just uh, one of those things where when the going yeah. gets tough, the tough get going, right? If yeah, if somebody is complaining to me that you know they feel that they're paying ungodly amounts of money, first of all, they're not paying that, right? Their parents are paying for it, or they have a loan, or they came to some wealth and they are in fact paying for it. But if somebody is complaining to me that they have to get a degree and do work on top of that, boohoo, motherfucker! Welcome to the world. <laughs> I, I know I, I agree with you like obviously Dude. like I'm on the same page as far as project-based learning worked well for me I think a lot of students when they get to college that really just doesn't compute right because they've been through high school and to get into college you have to do sure do some extracurriculars I mean I went through the process you did too right when you're applying and you put down some things you did in high school but the main thing it came down to at least what I did in high GPA. school Jason is I crossed the border for three years to go to high school. Yeah. Every single day. Okay. Like, I don't want to do that. I have to. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to do a project? Then go find a different thing to do because, <laughs> yo, you, you've got billions of people on earth and, um, you know, you, you, got, you, got, you got people who are hungry who are going to do this better than you if you slack off. So like, you know, after all, you know, life is life. Like, you know, we're, we're um, you know, you graduate and it's wild out there. You know, you, you, you leave home and it's wild out there. You know, you're, you're, you know, people are not looking for out. They're not looking out for you. They're looking for themselves rightfully. So, look out for yourself too. You know, um, yeah. if you feel it's a lot of work, then don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I mean, it is uh, it is. dude, I have opinions about it because I feel for me, particularly, it hasn't been easy. Like the, the cars have not been but like a lot of cards have been stacked for me. Um, I've been very privileged, uh, but a lot of other cards have not. Right. And when <laughs> I see people who are complaining about some bullshit, I'm like, well, I don't have patience for you. So thank you, but no, thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, so, I mean, that's, that's life. Yeah. I sound angry yeah. right now. I'm not angry. I'm just... I'm not patient with, um, you know, th this data science thing is not easy. Computers are not easy. Uh, we're still monkeys, but banging at keyboards and this is not going to be easy. So like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's, I agree with you on all, all counts. I mean, it's, it's addictive. It's, it's competitive addictive. Too. It's fun. You know, if you, if you have this mindset of like, it's okay to fail and it's okay to try super hard, like, it's addictive. It's so much fun. Yeah. You know, I do this. I program with friends. I program with my girlfriend. 
love doing that you know it's um i am such an art look you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like for me it works because and so if, if you're not gonna put that passion and that w amount of work into it other people will yeah yeah so i, th I think it's, this especially goes for people that are trying to break into it right i, I feel like there's a bit of a, a double standard where once you have experience in the field, right? Like that's the joke. You have to have a job to get a job, right? You have to have some experience. And so that first sort of experience and breaking down that barrier is really the key. And I think yeah. for most people, but, projects are but, like foot in the door. But I do want to stress once you get in, it doesn't mean you're in like, you know, as time progresses, there's always that next wave, right? Oh, there's always that next wave. You and I are older and, you know, now there's like the Z generations and all this <laughs> bullshit that, you know, people blog about. Um, and there's always going to be somebody who's willing to do more work than you if you slack off. So, um, for me, I'm still learning. Right. And, uh, you know, one of my good friends, Armin, uh, is my mentor, right? Uh, so I'll ask him questions about Terraform. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, how do I get this Fargate uh, cluster deployed with secret keys? <laughs> Back yeah. to the beginning of this conversation. Uh, and I'll sit with him and yo, we'll pair program on, on Zoom because we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and I'll see him struggle. Yeah. And I feel so good. <laughs> I feel so good to see him struggle because, you know, I, I idolize him as this unique creature who's just endowed with brains all, and shit. You know? But no, it like this motherfucker struggles. He goes and Googles things and like Google is not enough. You have to go on GitHub and because there's no stack overflow for these questions, you have to go and <laughs> find a repo that has the code and like try to hack it together, right? So like I feel good because, you know, it for me, it's encouraging that not only, hey, I'm not doing this alone. Yeah. My friend is doing this too, but like, it also makes me feel like I'm not inadequate. You know, I, you know, we carry this flag of like imposter syndrome uh, and that's okay. Like we're just, we're just humans. We're just trying. Right. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, I think there's one, there's a topic I wanted to talk to you about. Um, Cause when I did the first one of these little episodes, I had, Sam and Tim on and we were talking about projects and things like that and it feels like a lot of a lot of young students let's just focus on students trying to get their first job right some think that like the project-based learning approach and using that as an in right or something that you can leverage to get that first job or first role um it doesn't make a whole lot of sense at first because they're used to that path. Some are used to the path, you know, just get good grades that, right. That's how it worked for my dad back in the day, right. As long as you jump through the right hoops, you'll get there. And so there's this other hoop yeah. that a lot of people are using to break into the industry or break into whatever it is they're trying to do. And that throws them off quite a bit. And I was reading about this, topic called the paradox of success or the success paradox where people that are trying to achieve a goal right that stat student that's trying to break into data science the most direct path seems like to just excel at your classes right and then go to the career fairs and things like that but there's all these other things you can do to try to like widen your surface area of good luck happening, right? Of meeting the right person or uh, learning the right technology and that sort of thing. And so I feel like a lot of students do this thing. I don't know if you're familiar with the term satisficing. 
it comes up in like UI design, right? Where people will just kind of click through things. They'll uh, sacrifice, but they'll get to a sufficient end, right? And that's what a lot of people do just in day to day, right? You don't always find the optimal route from your home to work, right? You just take whatever route you know. And so similarly, a lot of people just see going to class, doing those things and checking right boxes will get them to where they need to. Um, but when in reality, it's sort of following the things that you find the most interesting and excelling there can be pretty helpful for trying to get into where you're trying to at the end of the day. Yeah. Like for me, that was the club. I was always a little worried in the back of my head that all that effort on that club and on that project, like we're talking about and doing these projects, yeah. would pay off in the end. Well, I mean, it certainly will not pay off if you stop right if you completely stop and just kind of give up like nothing is going to pay off it's just going to be a sunk cost but uh i think my experience like uh you know and before i even talk about my experience i do want to harp on the point you made which is um as a human being, I'm not sure if what I'm doing now is what I want to do. And if I switch to something else, I'm not sure if what I've done is a waste of my time. Yeah. And I don't think it is. That's my view. Uh, I, 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 I like to have an optimistic view about that. But from my experience, it has been true that I have felt that uh, when I, you know, didn't finish my econ degree uh, or the technology management program uh, certificate, like, and I, you know, fucked around with a startup project. Um, I think, you know, when I was applying for jobs after that, that project failed, uh, it felt like a waste of time. Nobody was interested in knowing that I had interviewed 700 customers and, you know, that I was familiar with the business model canvas and that I know that you need to harp on problem statements, but not this or that. Mm -hmm. uh, and those things were not useful when, you know, <laughs> you're doing tech support or when you're doing like, um, you, you know, I, I, um, I worked at data camp for a minute and built some courses there. That was super fun. It's funny. Cause like I learned about data camp through you personally, <laughs> and I ended up working at data camp years later. Right. But yeah, yeah. Small world. Uh, yeah. It's funny. Um, those entrepreneurial things didn't make sense in this uh environment for example but eventually they make sense if you keep harping on the things you want to do with your life they will make sense like eventually uh steve jobs i'm not gonna i'm gonna be cheesy and bring up a steve jobs reference but yeah. steve jobs once said something to the effect of like your life will seem like these string of random points on a graph and you won't know what's going on but then when you look back you can see a straight line through that like a regression uh well he did say regression right but like you got the point yeah um uh, so for me like having failed in entrepreneurship and things like that and and having understood you know things from that and 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 kind of iterated from those and having some successes and some subsequent failures and you know it's it's a it's a cycle mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. those things are useful to me in my job now right uh working as a data scientist at a venture capital fund uh we are talking to founders all day so uh i know when someone someone does not understand who their customers are i know uh when somebody you know is bullshitting uh or whatever um 
and you know like i'm also human like i've gone through experiences so like those things are helpful in those contexts uh and and so i i think like if your if your heart is calling you to do something just fucking do it uh <laughs> and try again if you fail and and things will make sense right say you are for example a fashion designer today and you happen to be interested in data science right and this seems overwhelming and you're like oh shit i spent a lot of time to do this fashion design well, guess what? There are probably very few engineers or data scientists who are knowledgeable in fashion design. So if you become a data scientist after you have been a fashion designer, you will be the best data scientist in that particular space. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that applies around a whole host of other industries. Um, and also, I don't want to make it you know i love data science and engineering and all this stuff data science is not the answer for everybody uh everyone's gotta gotta find their own light bulb and, and go at it um and i think like there has to be an intrinsic love to it right um if there isn't that kind of yearn to keep harping on it then then harp on some other things till you find something very interesting Or keep pursuing it until you eventually yeah. flunk out. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to fuck up. Do we, do we have any questions from the audience or anything that we haven't covered yet? No, no. Um, I think we've hit on everything that I want to get through today. How about awesome. You, awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I, um, I would say the last thing I would say is uh, if anybody, uh, if one of, one of my other mentors, uh, David Talene Lawton from the technology management program, um, he, uh, in, you know, I, I think he, he, he sensed that I wasn't getting the kind of encouragement or the kind of mentorship I needed. And he sort of, uh, helped me devise a framework for asking for help uh which is to find somebody who is doing something that i love uh and you know somebody who's being successful at that yeah and to re find some commonality reach out to them let them know hey i look up to you and i want to do those things too how can i do that right and people you know people are good people are really good people want to help people want to people <laughs> people want to leave a good mark on on earth and and generally what i have found is when i've asked for help people have been very uh you know supportive so i would say if you're finding you know not just for data science but any field if you are trying to get somewhere reach out and, and ask for help. And, and I, I want to extend anybody who needs help or, or has questions or anything like hit me up. Like, uh, I had somebody from Japan hit me up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and, uh, I was excited. I was like, Hey, uh, our intern at Delta Emerald Ventures <laughs> reached out to me randomly on LinkedIn and said, Hey, um, uh, I feel like I, you know, I have all the, all the things needed for a job and some companies are telling me I'm overqualified and some companies are, are telling me I'm underqualified and I just don't know what is going on. Uh, and I was like, dude, totally. Have you done projects? <laughs> so I gave him a little bit of framework there. Um, and, you know, turns out he's a unicorn. So we're all like, dude, let, let hire that guy like we need, we need tristan we need tristan so uh you know now tristan and i program on the weekend sometimes uh and you'll have fun at it and, and you'll curse at the terminal and all the things uh 
<laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, I would say you know if it's okay to ask for help, and and that that would be that would be I think the the closing remark for me to uh, to the to, to the audience is people want to help, so ask for help. Totally, that's what's made me want to do these videos. Questions on LinkedIn, Twitter. Yeah, absolutely. All right, David. Thank you so much for the time. Hope you had fun. Dude, had a lot of a lot of fun with you. Uh, always great hanging out with you. Uh, awesome. You know, maybe they can reopen Aladdin's and we can get a beer down. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that place is still open. <laughs> it's not, dude. No. Probably tells me they closed. So. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. that means there's an open liquor license in IV. Something like its place. I'll be fine when it opens up. All right. Thanks, David. Thank Have you, man. Good night. Have a great night. Talk to you later.